Hello, and welcome back to SciTai Tech. In this video, I'm gonna go do a teardown of this laminator. I'm curious to see how it works, and I wanna see if there's any parts that are worth salvaging. Let's get started. First, what I'm gonna do is cut off the electrical cord since it's not needed. Next, what I'm gonna do is remove all of the rubber feet because underneath each of these rubber feet contains screws. Next, what I need to do is remove all of the screws, which will then allow me to open the housing. And there, I loosened all the screws, and now I can turn it over and dump them out. And now I can remove the housing, and there, that's what's inside. This part here is not needed. And as you can see, it's just a few simple electronics. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look. This looks like a thermal sensor. And that one too. This right here is an AC gear motor. Basically the same thing you would find in a microwave. Let's have a closer look. And as you can see, it's a 220 and a 240 volt AC gear motor. Next, I'm going to remove the AC stepper motor. Follow where the wires go. And there we go, the wires are now cut. And now I can just simply pull off the AC gear motor. And now let's go a little deeper and see if there's any more parts worth salvaging. Cut these wires since it doesn't need to be attached. There we go. So I have right here these thermal sensors. Since I can't pull the connectors that easy, I may as well just cut the wires. Remove the screws so that way I can extract the thermal sensors. And there we go. These little thermal sensors could be useful for future projects. I can probably put it on some kind of device to be able to measure and sense the heat to prevent it from overheating. Basically, that's what these are there for. And now let's go a little deeper. Remove these screws, since these wires here connect to ground. This right here looks like another thermal sensor. One sensor is for a higher heat and the other sensor is for a little bit lower heat. It's to measure the correct heat to allow it to function at the heat that it's supposed to function and the other one is probably to measure the temperature from overheating which I can probably use for a future project for a specific heating of a device. Next I'm going to remove the screw that's attached to these wheels. And now open it up, and as you can see, it has these little rubber wheels. And this right here is the heating element for the device. Cut the wires. And now pull it out. Cut the wires on the opposite end. And now I can pull it out. Hmm, this part could be useful for a future project. Maybe to use as some kind of warming device. These little rubber rollers has an interesting feel to them. They have a little bit of friction and they seem a little bouncy. Not really sure what I can do with this, but maybe use it for a future project. And this right here is just pure aluminium. Not really sure what I'll use it for, possibly as a heat sink, or maybe just to melt it and scrap it. And you can tell that it's aluminium because the magnet doesn't stick to it. But using the eddy currents, you can see the magnet slides down slowly, which is always fun to look at, but I'm probably just going to scrap this, maybe melt it down to turn it into something else. And as you can see, this fuse could be potentially useful for future projects, since this is a 250 volt AC fuse, uses 10 amps, and it can handle a temperature of 142 degrees Celsius. And now, let's go a little deeper. This little box right here is the motherboard that controls the entire device. So now, let's go ahead and open it up. 
and see what kind of components are worth salvaging. How interesting is a very simple device. Using a few simple components, a 2 watt resistor, some rectifier diodes, transistor, electrolytic capacitor, some LEDs, more resistors, an inductor, a high voltage capacitor, and this little interesting switch right here. And there you have it. This is what I have salvaged from this device. I have right here a bunch of screws that could be very useful for future projects. This little circuit here has a bunch of interesting components that can be very useful. These heating elements can be useful for something. Not sure what, but I can use it. These pieces of aluminium could potentially be useful as a heat sink or turn it into scrap and just melt it into something else. These wires are potentially useful. This little gear motor, I'm not really sure if I can use it since it uses 220 to 240 volts AC unless I plug it into a special outlet in America. Otherwise, I might not use it. This little fuse right here could be very useful since it has interesting specs. These little thermal sensors definitely could be useful since they seem like they can handle different temperatures. One for a lower temperature and the other for a higher temperature. I'll have to test those out and see what I can do with these. And these roller pins, I don't really know what I'll use these for. I just like the way they feel and how they bounce together when I do this. I could possibly use it in the kitchen, maybe to roll out cookies or something. I don't know. I could do something interesting with these. However, I don't think the silicone is food grade, so maybe I'll use it as a press of some sort. I don't know. I might use it for something. Maybe to flatten out something like paper or glue. Something I can use. I'm not really sure what. And there you have it. Now you know what's inside of a very simple laminator, what kind of components that are worth salvaging, and basically seeing how it works. Thank you for watching SciTitech. I hope you learned something new, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTitech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.